There we go. So, one month my impressions of the HP Reverb G2. I uh, wanted to just try to show that one a little bit, share my experience here. And I think we could start with tracking. Let me swift off where there we go. Tracking. So I'm using just to clarify my uh, G2's microphone, the built-in one. Uh, no, no filtering, no you know levels, uh, no equalizer, no noise gate. I have a quiet living room here but I have about you know one and a half length arm length one one and a half arm length away from computer that is uh, quite silent it has a s slight uh, fan like very low background noise fan little bit going but other than that there is nothing yeah so you can truly hear everything you know that the microphone can uh, you know produce in audio and how much it will pick up in a room normal room without any excessive tv or kids or other you know noise being made but just by that just the kind of background noise and how noise and how everything comes through but yeah so starting off with the tracking I can see myself. I'm in virtual virtual desktop at the moment here. Yes, I was thinking if I should try to maybe do this within like Angry Birds, but I'm think I'm gonna just do talking here. So if you don't want that, if you want more of visual uh, in you know impression or review or something like that, there are better videos out there. This will just be me in this position trying to this discuss my you know impression how i feel about it this headset after one month and tracking seems to be the biggest thing so i was thinking let's get that out of the way right away uh, but if you are very impatient you know you don't want to watch a video or anything for like a summarize or anything um i really like this headset overall it's not a perfect but it's for me it's the at the moment the best compromise Sorry if this noise, it looks so weird, like the image are perfectly fine, but looking in the camera it looks like everything is off, but I'm gonna try to ignore that. I don't know why it's like that, uh, really. So weird looking here. Um, the straps seems to be really nice. Um, it feels like it's centered here. Um, looks, you know, perfectly good in line within and everything, so yeah. Moving along, so the tracking. Uh, so the G2 tracks with four cameras. You have two in the front, two one on each side, and then you have the LED lights uh, that can be faintly seen along this ring. The small dots they will light up. Uh, I can show it. If you hold the little Windows button. Uh, it's this one that kind of have a little bit of a bump groove down in it and they will light up so this is what your you know the G2 will try to see to determine wh where in the room and the space and everything the controllers are and to turn them off they are automatically turning off but you can also hold the windows button again and they will turn off let me just there we go um so oh uh, is it yeah i need to turn off something here we can discuss that later on there we go so now you know kind of how the tracking works wow. so you need you can't have anything that are like in similar kind of strength and intensity and stuff like that and it will confuse the g2 um you cannot have direct sunlight, bright, you know, lightening the room very, very, very much because then, you know, the lighting won't be strong enough. You cannot have a too dark of a room because then the cameras, they don't use infrared or anything. They use just regular, they are just regular kind of black and white cameras. So, you know, for the contrast ratio, I'm sure it's because of that to maximize it. But black and white cameras here, so you cannot have... Uh, you know complete dark room because 
tracking will probably work with the controllers, uh, you know, after, you know, perfectly. They will be able to kind of, you know, see a lot of lightning. But uh, the headset itself, the cameras, you know, they track the light on the controllers, but they also reads, you know, your rooms. So when I move my head around, it's going to see, it's going to notice stuff on the walls. It's going to notice my monitor in front of me. And then it's going to see how my head moves, you know, in contrast to that. So if it is very dark, it will not be able to distinguish like stuff on the walls from the wall. It will not be able to, you know, distinguish my monitor in a good way from other stuff and like that. So you cannot have pitch black. Um, a, a, like this is a day where it is a little bit cloudy outside. I have um, some light coming in through. It's it's really nice. That works probably going to work really, really good. And also in um, the evening, if it's dark outside, completely dark, it's uh, in Sweden it is that this time of year, then an uh, overhead lamp that uh, my I think mine is rated to uh, you know be uh, about 40 watts of light of a traditional light bulb and you know that kind of lightning is really good for the G2 40 60 watts something like that will work you know nice but a good lit room but not overly bright or anything and I don't have any RGB in the Christmas light uh, I don't have any like crazy green screen to obstruct because you know the cameras need to see things and it needs to be able to see the lights clear on your controllers. And then the tracking is good. And, you know, holding, moving, throwing works really nice. Uh, here it will not track. You have built in gyroscope that can feel the, that, you know, you move it. So the, it will help with the tracking. Uh, but when you throw, you see you're mostly by the side, so the side cameras will track. Climbing, often you look a little bit up. So again, your side cameras and th then with the help of the in-bit gyro, it's going to work really nice. Uh, FPS games, you know, often if you hold them, there can, in s if you hold them, ex like if you're really, really good at holding them exactly in front of each other, Yes, then the, you know, the one closer to your headset will have a problem. But, you know, it's very easy for me at least to kind of like get a nice position where they are a little bit out of line with each other. And then it works absolutely fine. It's very comfortable. I have no problem. So first person players are not a problem for me. The rings are on the bigger side. Excuse me here. I'm going to just... There we go. Let me see. There we go. Uh, the rings on the side, on the, not on the side, on the controls, they are on the bigger side. In most cases, you will give, you will learn, and you will not have a problem. In some specific, very, like games that have precise reloading that you need to do very close to like the in-game gun model, uh, there you might have problems hitting them a little bit you're probably going to learn this by using it for a little bit for a while uh, and this will not be a problem but they are definitely it would have been nice if they could have been smaller there is nothing to say that also the tracking is very kind of precise so if you are a little bit you know shaky it will transfer directly into the movement of the, you know, what you're holding in your game or pointing or at everything there. So um, I would have liked if you, they had like a smoothing, like slider, so you can like, I don't want any smoothing. I just want the maximum, you know, input latency and everything precise and add a little bit of smoothing to kind of take out the kind of shakiness sometimes. And it's not the controllers is bad. It's actually, you know, your body, when you're holding something, you're very, very rarely absolutely still. And it gets transferred so easily in. Like the, like now my hands are moving little, little, little. And that will be transferred in too. Because the tracking are really good. That's not a bad tracking. But I think they could have had some smoothing in software to kind of... Um, definitely to help with that. I definitely feel that. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot really comment on the haptics. Some don't like them. I had them turn on for like the first hour of 
using my G2, then I turned off. It has nothing to do with uh, what I feel about haptics in the G2. It's just I don't <coughs> I don't like haptics in anything. Uh, not in an Expo controller, not a dual controller, not in my Steam controller, not in my mobile phone, my smartphone. I don't uh, I don't like it. I uh, yeah, I do not use haptic. I don't feel it enhances something for me. So unfortunately, but this more limited time I had it, um, I felt it for sure. It's haptic. It's something. It's not something I felt. Whoa, this is so good that I wanted to have it. You know, keep it on. And it also wasn't something that I felt. But shit, this is so terrible. I got to immediately turn this off. You know, I could. Uh, because the first time I think I just booted up Half-Life Alex, the haptics was on and everything, and I just played it, and it was, you know, it wasn't any problem or anything like that, but I just don't feel it is anything for me. Uh, the biggest thing with the controls I feel are, there is on the back, um, let's see here, it's been, okay, so here you have, this is a battery compartment, and by pressing on this kind of kind of little bit of slope part, and then you know you push down and then you push it up. Uh, let me see if I can. They are a little bit finicky. I do uh, know that others have said the same, and I can agree. It's it's a little bit, you ta it takes a little bit more force than it should be necessary. But here you have it, the battery compartment for two AA batteries. I uh, have no problem with this method because it's good. I can play and then I can just quickly swap batteries if they run out instead of charging the controller. So I think that's fine. Uh, the biggest problem is that they made this, the controllers really, you know, they want the controls to be 1.5 volts and that most rechargeable, rechargeable batteries are 1.2 volts. These are IKEA cheap rechargeable batteries, 1.2 volts. They work fine for me. I used my controller for like two, maybe two, two, hour, two three hours, one week and the controllers works absolutely fine. Then I just felt that like I want to swap and I want to charge, you know, so I don't happen to run out in the middle of something. But I don't use the haptics. Haptics can, you know, drain the quicker. The batteries, it will drain it quicker. And it haptics um, probably wants 1.5 volts. And also to if you have, you know, difficult lightning conditions for the tracking, 1.5 volts batteries can definitely improve that because the LEDs then can be brighter to compensate for bad lightnings, uh, you know environment but i think it's bad that they made this for 1.5 volts they should have made it compatible with 1.2 volts um, that is the baddest thing about the controllers uh, yeah but you know since i don't use haptics i have a nice uh, environment lightning it has worked perfectly fine i have reached at least 15 hours usage uh, without any problems any cracking inconsistency or stuff like that and they also could have made you know the battery compartment a little bit easier to slide on and off and the controllers in general i i like how they feel when i'm holding them not really anything i can reach like let me hold the right one here yeah so i can feel it oops uh, yeah but i feel that they feel nice in my hand perfect nice size uh, no problem with the weight they are they feel i can feel that they are a little bit like they could have be, been uh, nice if they were lighter but it's not a uh, heavy or anything but i can feel that you know you feel that you know it wouldn't be bad if they were lighter but it's not anything like particular nothing stands out feels all right um but when you are play, you know, playing, they, they feel a little bit creaky sometimes, the battery cover or something. And like the clicking, the stick, it has no rubbering on it, it's just pure plastic. And when you move it, it feels a little bit, it doesn't feel premium. It feels 
very very all right and i have no problem that like it probably will uh, live uh, you know work for a good long period of time probably hopefully several years you know so there are better headsets and you're just gonna change it whatever but it it doesn't have a premium feel i can definitely tell that but they are nice they're good they are not something that bother me but sometimes you can feel like a little bit of flex in the cover and like some creaking using the stick that it just you don't get this kind of top notch top of the line controller crazy build quality but they are really good otherwise move on so i think that is the biggest point here everyone wants the tracking and everything but i haven't i haven't encountered anything game breaking uh, i would, probably should before we move on to that point there are no camera below so tracking obviously very close is not going to be really good you can be pretty damn close but not super 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 close uh, the the distance from the headset has not been a problem for me. I have had, not problem, but I have noticed several times that, you know, that when you have your controllers below this part, uh, by your, you know, controllers straight down or something like that, you know, they won't track. And they can, depending on you, how you move and stuff, have like this, that you see that thing, you know, jump, jump into the frame. So if that is something that is bothering you, your immersion and playability, uh, that can be a problem. Um, it's like it's really nothing. Like if if I if it you know I glance down and I can see my controller a little bit just very slightly you know move or something because it start track. It's not immersion breaking for me. It's not something that I feel is uh, a big problem. But I can see it being that for you. Uh, some people have said that you know when you have your controllers down they fly off uh, you know not physically but virtually within the game um, i have not been able to verify that so, yeah i don't know to me they always seems to be stable maybe it is that but you know as soon as i look they you know correct themselves to the correct position so that's why i don't notice it but i have never ever seen or experienced that so tracking overall is good uh, you know it, it's not gonna beat the index or something like that but it's really good and you can do probably unless specifically you feel that you need the best tracking this is gonna be more than good enough in my opinion in my environment in my lightning in my games i've played so let's move on from that, but I wanted to take that first. Visuals, that's probably another big one here. FOV, it is on the smaller side, I felt, when using the original cover, just putting it on. I could kind of feel, you know, the, the edges and see them. Can I not feel, but see the... And they had like this scuba gear, a little bit feeling. It's not terrible. But it is on, felt on the low side. Low side. I am using an FOV mode. Um, you might turn down your volume. I'm gonna take off my headset. I'm gonna show it to you briefly, and try to discuss it, uh, holding my headset and speaking close to the microphone. So. Hopefully the microphone is going to work nice. So this is a 3D painted cover. I've used a service for that. And you can, if you search my or look to my channel, if I remember, I will link it below, G2 modification. And then I have bought from Amazon HTC Vive cover. It had a pack with six and 10 and 12 millimeter of covers. I used the six millimeter and I, had double strong double adhesive kind of pads that I cut up and used to attach this. You can use um, other ways too. I forgot the name right now on top of my head. Uh, Velcro, that's it. If you have self adhesive Velcro stick, you can put Velcro on the plastic 3D printed cover, and then you can attach that to the you know Velcro. It, the um, HTC Vive cover will attach to the Velcro. And then I have some small 
neodymium, uh, well, magnets, strong magnets mounted. So it is actually attaching just like the regular one. I don't have any padding or anything for the nose. I like that actually, because that like lets air in and out of the headset easier and it can be get warm with the default one, a little bit foggy sometimes until everything and this helps with having the nose flap like open it's still very dark the original one is pitch black you know you get no light leakets and everything but i think it's nice to have a little bit of air being able to come in and out and everything and also i like it so i can glean down on my phone or my keyboard uh, so this total cost of everything is probably around for me uh, 50 dollars or like somewhere around that 50 euros 50 dollars uh, maybe 45 pounds 500 swedish kroners uh, total but it's very nice very comfortable and this gives you takes away that little scuba and makes scuba or small fov and makes it a good fov it's a uh, decent it's still it's what I think should be the bare minimum, this one, actually. Um, let's shoot, I'm gonna try to put it on, so you might wanna mute for a short. And there we go, hopefully it wasn't too much of a noise for everyone. So yeah, FOV smaller, the mod is uh, not super expensive or anything, and it's uh, really m it makes a nice difference. It's not a huge difference. If you try the G2 and you felt that the FOV is not something for you, then the modification will not change that. If you feel that oh I really like the, F the G2 and everything, but the FOV could have been a little bit nicer, then the mod can you know push that up to you know the little bit giving you like oh that's nice. So uh, there are minimal guard rays in my experience. It really needs to be like a super dark environment and they're really super bright, and they need to be kind of like most likely off-centered towards the edge to really make the god rays be invisible. It's very small, uh, no real chromatic aberration that I have been that have been disturbing me. I'm sure there might be some, but I haven't really noticed anyone. So I can, yeah, it's my impressions. You want a professional review, go go, go check out a lot and read those. Um, so next is a little bit of controversial here, but for me it is a great sweet spot, and by that I mean it's very easy, you know, as I just recently did, to just put the headset on and quickly know how to wear it, where the screen looks good, where the colors and everything, you know, where everything looks good, that is very easy to find, that for me is a good sweet spot. The Yi one had a terrible, terrible one. I always had to like adjust and try and during game I moved and I felt I needed to adjust to make just the and everything within the picture to just be good, as good as it could be. For this, it's very easy, you know, I, I flip the cover up, I position this. And I very quickly, just by very s slightly, you know, seeing that, oh, now everything looks as good as it can. And then I flip down. And I have my, uh, what this is what I feel is a good sweet spot. Now, I'm gonna go into more. So, many people I feel take sweet spots is how big of the screen area is at its absolutely best clarity. Uh, that is what I'm coming to now, center to edge clarity. For me, these are two separate things. I think it's very, very important to separate them, but that is just me. Yeah, so you know, when I'm, when I'm saying it has a good sweet spot, I'm not talking about how much of the screen that has the maximum amount of the clarity, you know, possible within the headset. That is what I'm coming to now, the center to the edge clarity. And that is uh, kind of mixed bag. It has a smaller 
maximum area that is as sharp as possible can be and then it very quickly you know up till like the edge somewhere around maybe 70 percent from 20 to 70 20 being like a circle in the middle then up to the 70 you have this kind of smoothing of the like a like a blurring effect you know very very faint but it, it is there it's noticeable like now when i'm reading my sheet here i know that like maybe 20 25 something like that is of the text that i'm reading or maximum sharpness crispness or is the absolute greatest then accept right after that i can clearly see that it starts to smoothen out up to 70 something where it kind of like is the same blurriness uh, you know non uh, the less clear 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 image to the edge of the screen so that's what i'm uh, taking you know from the center to the edge clarity for me that is something sweet spots different so yes if you are only reading within the g2 that might be something that you might feel is distracting. Now, this 25, 20-25% of you know, this kind of circle clarity in the middle is only noticeable for me, really, when having like a web browser open or reading my document and uh, kind of like are thinking about the clarity. It's not... It's not really visible when I'm watching a movie. It's not really visible playing a game, being in an experience. It felt really sharp and natural. And it's not like, it's not that I cannot read the text outside the 25%, 20-25% of the you know center clarity. It's just that they are starting to be not as sharp. I can still read maybe 60% of the screen, you know, are readable. So, you know, it's it's quite great in that way anyways, but it's something that you k might be more annoyed of depending on your, you know, we all, some are really sensitive to guard rays. It's just what it is. Some are very sensitive to chromatic abrasion. Some are very sensitive to uh, contrast ranges. So you need to know that the maximum clarity is not super big. But this, I, to me, in my impressions are that is a very subtle, nice smoothness to around 70%, 70, 80% of the screen. And then you have it just like it, it stays that kind of blurness till the rest of the edge. And this is the best headset for me when it comes to browsing internet, interacting with my computer. Like now I can read and I can see, I know the OBS overlay here I'm looking at. I can have a uh, little sheet of what I want to discuss with the E2 here. I can read it from top to like bottom and everything, even though the center all the max clarity. So, okay, moving on, moving on. Black levels. I would say that they feel the contrast rate. Contrast ratio feels like a decent IPS monitor. Uh, in horror games, it will definitely be something that you might very easily notice that it isn't really really crazy dark crazy black level it's yeah it's it decent ips monitor let's just the more nothing more to say really colors feels like a good ips monitor i really feel that the colors are really nice i have a nice va panel and the the colors in this are definitely on the same level or possibly you know maybe even better something like that. but it's it's like a good quality monitor good the color reproduction and uh, the saturation and stuff like that uh, the, it's actually in my experience i tried the blur buster which is basically a ufo flying on in your web browser and you can see how much kind of this smearing effect it has on the screen and this is called uh, i believe ghosting and this is one of the really really great ones my va panel is barely decent you can clearly see something like that my oled tv are really good and these are good it's really minimal like they really did a great job with the ghosting here like minimizing that 
so very sharp, very precise when you move your head, when stuff moves on the screen. And it's a very high resolution and the overall clarity is really, really nice. So overall the visuals are a, really a plus, the best I've used, except for the default gasket has a little bit on the low side FOV, otherwise amazing, amazing visuals. So let's moving on. Comfort. Uh, default gasket and everything, it's very lightweight, it's very very nice, it doesn't bother me. I've used my headset for up to 6-7 hours in a row, there's no problems, no discomfort, nothing. Uh, the FOV mode is uh, not as smooth as the original, but it's really comfortable too, the HTC Vive cover I got. The cable, uh, it's much better than G1. But I feel still would like it to be more bendy, more smooth, there, uh, thinner and everything. And it has some coating when you get it that are a bit sticky. So what I did, I used some light, gentle dishwashing, you know, like soap and just gently rubbed through the cable, especially this part here. And then I actually used some baby powder. Uh, you know, you can use maybe that you use when you're power lifting that kind of powder too and at applied it to this part and it has made a huge nice difference. Uh, I think I'm going to reapply after one month a, a little extra layer, but it's really just doing this once has made it really, really nice. It's not as sticky at all. You know, it doesn't really... It doesn't stick to close anything or something like that. A, a nice tip if you find that. But it is weird that it is sticky by default. I don't understand it, but it's something that is very easily, uh, you know, fixed. So comfort, lightweight, very sm smaller, compact, awesome, no complaints. If you are going to share this with your partner, your kids, your family, it uses velcro, velcro straps on the sides and the top. That is not optimal. You know, if you're going to adjust them for different people, they are most likely, they might wear out. In. So great for a single user and like me, without a knob, I can rest my head against my chair very easily watching movies, uh, Twitch, YouTube or whatever. But if you are going to use this with many share this device it's not the best i do believe they have uh, extra like third party not hp but some uh, someone have made a third party strap that has the knob that is gonna be good if you're gonna share it otherwise it's perfect comfort wise nothing problem audio let's start with the bad they have no 3.5 millimeter jack anywhere on the entire headset Meaning, if you don't want to use the, you know, the the headphones uh, speakers on the G2, they are removable. But if you don't want to use them, you're gonna you have to use a wireless or Bluetooth headphones or wired and have another wire running to your computer. That, oh, it absolutely shit. To be quite honest, shit. The cost of adding a 3.5 cannot have been more than like a dollar or two or something like that overall of the price. And it should have been. There's going to be so many sim races or audio files and the people with that want less bass, more bass or just more on ear. Don't want open headphones because of the families and stuff like You should not have done that. That is shit. But... It's shit. Okay, nothing can change about that. So, moving on. I feel that uh, overall, you know, the mid and heights, high, high end, high frequencies are nice. They are good. Uh, they feel high end in a in a in a head VR headset. The bass are there. It's uh, you know, it's not gonna be bass head pumping. So, oof, oof, oof. But it's uh, it's a good bass. It's, uh, I'm gonna show you something here. Uh, hopefully this is going to work, so let me just shuffle some things around. And switch to 
there we go so oops well you're gonna have to peek under here but if you look under here there is this sound symbol this little speaker symbol if you go to open sound settings well I can do this I'm sorry I'm, uh, I'm we're gonna do there we go so in the right here the speaker icon open sound settings there we go and you have sound control panel and then you have speakers Realtek USB 2.0 audio default device if you double click it go to enhancements you have bass boost and I set it to 100 Hertz and a boost level of 3 that gives a little more heaviness to uh, the low end you you need to be careful when doing this as if you're gonna crank it too loud you can overdrive the speakers and stuff like that when you do apply this the overall volume of the speakers will be lower to compensate for this so you it should you know it's trying to help you from not blowing the speakers up uh, but this is something that you might if you're if you you know be aware of everything that can happen and listen to how it sounds if it sounds if you push the volume really like 80 90 or 100 percent up and it feels that the sound sounds starts you know sounding really bad or weird turn this one back off but for me uh, using frequency 100 and then at level of 3 decibel has been a nice little extra oomph to the bass uh, the lower frequencies you can tweak this you can just adjust it to be only 80 hertz or 75 or 120 or 200 just a little bit something for you if you want to like just want a little bit extra in the bass don't go over don't go crazy don't go over 6 decibel or maybe not even to 6 decibel uh, I wouldn't recommend six, six decibels I have tried and it works but I think three is probably what you should go for as a max but you can try it and listen to how it sounds and everything and be aware that if you are driving it too, too hard you can break your speaker so be careful but it is something that is possible and I found is very nice overall for me and maybe while we are in these settings uh, oops wrong let me point you out something other here if you look at down here you have your microphone input here you should try to uh, well okay let's in if you're in your g2 or something like that or blah 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 but this microphone real tech usb 2.0 audio uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. no okay let's go back to sound control panel okay if you go to recording tab microphone realtek usb 2.0 audio and you go to levels you should probably turn this down to 50 i don't know uh, hopefully it hasn't been too bad audio but probably you need to tune this one testing Testing, 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 testing. Uh, but probably somewhere around 40 to 50. It you can get bad audio or distorted audio otherwise. Uh, they are very sensitive. The built-in microphone. I believe it's a stereo microphone here. So you definitely recommend you turning this one down and try to look at uh, like an audio meter or something I can look at this to see that it's not going crazy but you should tune this and you should tune it in this place uh, if you only tune it like in your game or in uh, OBS the only thing you're gonna do is lower the volume but the, the distortion can still be there to get rid of distorted audio this is the place you need to tune the levels correctly and I recommend 40 to 50 percent probably a good good place to keep it at 
going to actually be too interesting for watching this video because I unplugged every USB and that's why this has reset itself. I had it running at 40 uh, before. But yeah, that's just a little tip. So let's get back and move on here from the audio. Uh, overall the microphone I believe sounds great hopefully you can hear it now that it sounds great uh, when I adjusted the input level so right, we have the final here installation and software um, unfortunately there are a lot of incompatible with uh, USBs Speci specifically AMD motherboards uh, B550 and X570 in particular the USB-C and many of the USB 3.1 on board ports will not work for many people for me USB-C did not work I get uh, error 7.14 I used the included USB-C to A adapter in a USB 3.1 port and everything worked fine but you might need to use a USB hub, passive, active, or an in uh, PCI Express U USB extension card. I uh, yeah, no more comment. It's not good. But I just want to throw it out there. Uh, when you install it, there are no mentioning. But if you want to run Steam games, you need to install Windows Mixed Reality for Steam. Search Steam. It's free, and you must have that installed. Otherwise, Steam VR games will not work. Uh, another thing when it comes to the software here is that if you have your the G2 plugged in and power the power brick and everything, when you start your computer, when you boot it up, the G2's Windows Mixed Reality port will uh, start. And I have audio switching from the G2 to uh, uh, from from regular Windows to the G2 when it's uh, activated, meaning that audio will also goes to the G2 and stuff like that. It's bad. It, it's 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 a minor annoying thing. I think it should be a setting within the mixed reality portal to manually or automatically start with Windows or with the device or anything. I I would love a manual switch there. Uh, it's minor annoying, but yeah. Uh, so to get the G2's speaker and microphone to work, in my experience so far, you need to have the Windows Mixed Reality Portal automatically switching your desktop audio to the G2 audio when the Windows Mixed Reality Portal, you know, the v you start a Mixed Reality game or a Steam VR game or something like that, or when you put on your headset so that it then takes and swaps the audio to it. Um, otherwise it completely disabled the G2 don't know why didn't used to work that in my G1 but that's annoying uh, sometimes you might experience uh, that you cannot use your mouse and keyboard and that is also because Windows Mixed Reality when you start put your on your headset every input goes to the headset to bypass that you need to hold down the Windows key and press the Y key and then you can use your key and mouse normally on your desktop while wearing the headset. There are settings to manually enable and disable this in the Windows Mixed Reality Portal but I found it being better having Windows do its thing and then manually switch it off when I need it because otherwise sometimes weird thing happens let's just leave it at that <laughs> uh, so Windows Mixed Reality Portal is required you cannot close it down if you want to use any VR application it has to be running for the G2 to work it has to now you can turn off the Mixed Reality Portal's preview to save some resources or just yeah disable it very easy but even if you minimize it it will take well, around 500 megabyte to 1 gigabyte of your GPU's VRAM doing nothing in the background 
I don't know why, but it does. And it is super bad. Microsoft should really, really look into minimizing the GPU VRAM usage when it is not actively being used. It should not be that demanding when I'm only, you know, using it to pipeline into a Steam VR game. Uh, settings are a mess. Some settings you can apply and change in the Windows Mixed Reality portal. And let me let me do to do to do to do. Let me see where do we have the Mixed Reality portal so you can know what I'm talking about. Here we have it. Here we go. Let me there. Yeah, let's show this one off. This is the Mixed Reality portal that I am talking about. This will start with your Windows and this has some settings here. Uh, this was needed to make the built-in audio and microphone in the e to work. It will, was I discussed earlier. Here you can reset your, if you have, you if you're using uh, room scale, like you're walking around for tracking. I only use standing. I stand in one place. Well, let me well, let me discuss. Uh, can I do 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 do? No. Hmm. Well, I have. You you are supposed to be able to choose if you want room scale or if you don't want any room scale. And when you choose no room scale, what that basically means is that you have no borders. So you can move as freely as possible. Uh, it's best suitable for sitting, so you don't know, so you know that you don't run into your walls. But I have no problems with it so far, so I just, I don't want to use a room scale. I don't really barely use it, so and there's no problem. I don't run away when I'm in VR. But here you can clear that if it's something wrong. Uh, headset displays. This is supposed to blah blah uh, ex change the quality of the Windows Mixed Reality Cliff House, and you can change uh, how good web browsers within your. This is difficult to to uh, to explain, but to my knowledge, if you use Mixed Reality to kind of play a game and have a web browser or Spotify open within the same kind of in the same at the same time in VR this will make it a lower resolution I've set it to lower because I want to save performance I don't know how big of a difference it will make but what the hell uh, this is just an automatically kind of headset optimizations to make it look better or you know to save performance probably you're gonna use best visual quality the resolution I recommend leaving this at the best quality and in Steam VR turn down the resolution there uh, that is what my recommendations but you can use automatic scaling here recommend 90 Hertz you can change it to 60 it will be very kind of strobe then but you can this is okay, it's supposed to be grayed out because you have a hardware IPD adjustment, as you see, which changes how close or far apart the lenses are. So I wouldn't look at the numbers, but I will look at how the image within the VR looks rather. Somewhere around 63 sometimes. It's good for me. But it is weird, it doesn't really move so good. So, yeah. But this is the mixed reality port. Here are some of the settings. Now, unfortunately, I can't show this, but there are some settings if you run a Steam VR. Access the Steam VR menu. You have a little mixed reality icon in that menu where you can change more settings. The other thing is that some settings do not apply until you restart Steam VR, and some even you know 
you might even need to restart the mixed reality portal. It's very messy where the settings are and how exactly they apply. I feel so it's uh, yeah. Uh, the something you know mixed reality isn't all the Windows mixed Re Windows mixed reality isn't all bad. As I said, you can push your start button on the controller. The little that has a little bump, push that once when you are in a Steam or in a VR game. And from that menu you can access volume, you can access the web browser, you can start Spotify or pretty much any application that you have in your start menu. You can open and you can then view it while you are in a game. You can also very easily interact with that game, uh, with that window. So let's say I have, if I have YouTube window pinned uh, maybe above me to my, or like a little bit on top here in my view. I only need to be, I can be in my game and then I just bring my controller up and then it will be pointing at this browse YouTube window and I can browse there and I can click and stuff and then just bring it down and I'm in the game. Works damn, 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 damn great. Uh, you should not access the floor adjustment when you're in Steam VR through the start menu that will close down Steam VR game and toss you in uh, the mixed uh, Windows Mixed Reality floor adjustment and then it will toss you back to the cliff house or maybe you get tossed uh, Steam uh, VR home or something like that but unfortunately you cannot adjust the floor height as to my knowledge when you are running a Steam VR game don't know why you cannot reset the floor height within Windows Mixed Reality you can use the Steam VR to reset the VR, but yeah. Uh, the biggest software problem is going to be when it comes to the controller layout. This is a new controller layout, and apparently every single game need to be updated to work with this controller, meaning that a lot of older or less popular games might not work by default with the G2's controller and there is a Steam VR you know controller binding UI in VR that you can that kind of lets you do some weird rebinding stuff unfortunately that is a goddamn mess it's not very intuitive but once you I figure out a little bit of it but the problem biggest problem is that sometimes it just stops working no matter what you do, the controller UI just will not work. You cannot click stuff, you cannot act with, you cannot edit, you cannot do nothing. It will just stop working for no reason. And then maybe you start your computer another day and it, why it will just work again. You can edit, you can do tweaks, you can load profiles. The biggest software bug is this one. And I don't know why no games allow you to just when you boot up the game configure your controllers like the old like games from the early 90s lets you do you could configure the controllers you can configure them outside of the game even game di didn't care what you controllers you had you can remap them was built into the game now the game has to build in support for the controller so bad stuff happens but yeah it's a mess uh, most have worked there's been uh, community configs for a lot that was didn't work so we thank you community really appreciate it but it is the worst when it comes to software uh, cliff house i don't really care for it i use it only so Cliffhouse is if you just put on your headset and you toss into this Microsoft little house environment. I only use that to open a web browser in the Cliffhouse, browse to like YouTube, start a 360 VR video and watch that. Uh, other than that, the Cliffhouse I don't see. I start Mixed Reality Portal, I start Steam. Sometimes I start Steam VR, not really necessary. You know, you so you, you to run a game and just 
don't want if you don't want cliff house start mixed reality portal start steam start your steam game put on your headset you will maybe just for like a second get a glimpse of the cliff house nothing more then you exit the game in steam vr or you exit steam vr uh, or if you want it you could probably just take off your headset and then close steam vr and you will not see the cliff house for more you know not even barely uh, you won't see it like if the game has a quit when you're using steam vr you will go from the game to the steam vr ui so you will not see the cliff house and when the steam vr ui is running you just take off the headset close steam vr you don't have to use the cliff house it's not good it's not bad it's something it it could have been good if it was improved i don't see that it's that anything to me i just want to start the vr and get into the vr i don't need all the other crap in between i think the steam vr home could fuck off to get the shit out i don't want that i want my from my desktop to my vr application the steam vr application menu is nice the steam vr home i don't care for but the steam vr that you put on and if you disable the steam vr home you might know what i mean you can then open the menu where you can start your application that is really nice and you have a menu you can tweak settings but Cliff House, Steam VR Home, Oculus Home, they can fuck off. I don't care for them. Gladly, you don't have to interact with them. You don't have to interact with Steam VR Home or the Cliff House. So not a problem. And the last one, the G2 is a demanding son of a bitch. Most likely, if you have a like me, uh, AMD Ryzen 5600X, I ha if you have like 16 or more available of ram i have 32 gigabyte of ram but if you have 16 i think it's the same and like a 2070 super or 2080 you're probably going to run most of the game at a 50 percent steam vr resolution unfortunately it's not a big difference from 50 to 100 steam vr resolution but it is a difference it's very demanding so yeah it's it's good and bad you have crazy clarity but to get the most of out of it it is very demanding uh, i think i like i probably covered the most and this is a shit long video i don't know how i should don't know how i could have made it shorter unfortunately it's so much to talk about and discuss but yeah this is my impressions of the g2 after one month of use feel free to leave comments of stuff um that is it for this video if i you know if i can figure something that i really missed i might uh, leave a comment in below in the in the do 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 information field of the, my the video otherwise maybe i will do a separate video if there's something important or if there is some question that needs to be covered in a different video and i apologize apologize if this is long i don't know how i could get in all of this information in much shorter video unfortunately but yeah this is my impressions of the u2 it's the best compromise at the moment you have the greatest visual clarity and everything you have good audio for the most part really good you have a good working tracking for 95 percent plus of the time for me and i have you know good movability i can be standing up playing beat saber and i can move to my you know computer my chair here and i can lean back watch movies or play play sim racing that's why i want inside out tracking opposed to the index that tracks from base stations to your controllers that gives me that freedom that i can move i can stand in front of my computer i can stand on the on my mat my rug here to my left right side where i can move i can move freely you know my positions and standing and sitting i can switch freely without having to worry about any base stations and stuff like that so this is the best compromise at the moment it i want bigger foe i want better centered clarity 
I want higher resolution, I want wireless, <laughs> a more lightweight, smaller, I want even beefier bass or speaker, like everything needs to be improved, but this is after one month, my previous headsets have all been, should I really keep this, am I really gonna use this much, if I don't use it for a month, will I ever feel like I wanna use it again, and with this headset, to every question it is, yes, it is good enough, yes, I want to use it, yes, if I don't use it for a week or two or a month, I still feel it would be really nice to put it on again and use it. So, thank you if you made it all this far. I wish I could have done it smaller, more compressed, I just don't feel I could, unfortunately. That is all for the impression video, feel free to leave comments, questions or uh, suggestions for stuff you really you know want to see me try or something like that i might be able to do who knows but yeah love the hp reverb is not a perfect